Cave surveys require both accuracy and precision. Accuracy is the ability to deliver a measured value that is as close as possible to the true value. Precision relates to how exact and repeatable a measurement can be made. The critical cave survey measurements are the distance, azimuth, and inclination between stations. For taking azimuth and inclination measurements, there are only a few instruments that are accurate, precise, small, and rugged enough to use for cave survey. Suntu, a Finnish company, started making the KB-14 compass and PM-5 inclinometer in the late 1970s, and by the early 80s they became the default cave survey instruments, mostly replacing the Brunton pocket transit. Sighting compasses were quickly adopted by cave surveyors because they were less expensive than the pocket transit and much easier to train new surveyors to use. The Suntu inclinometer in particular is much easier to read than the pocket transit. Another Finnish company, Sistico, also started making nearly identical sighting instruments and later released the Survey Master, which incorporated both the compass and inclinometer in a single unit. Sistico was later bought by Silva, Brutton was also acquired by Silva, and the Sight Master, Clino Master, and Survey Master have been sold under each of these brand names. Suntu also now makes a single instrument that contains both the compass and inclinometer, known as the Tandem. Suntu also has a less expensive sighting compass, known as the KB-20, that has a plastic housing. This instrument is lighter than the KB-14, and it floats, but is not really rugged enough for regular cave use. Brutton also now makes the Omni Slope and Omni Sight inclinometer and compass, that have removable eyepieces and the option of a built-in LED light. Suntu's KB-14 compass and PM-5 inclinometer have gone through a few design changes, but the current models have an aluminum body with a plastic capsule that contains a fluid-damped magnetic disc that rides on a sapphire bearing. The bearing is very low friction so that the disc rotates freely, and the damping fluid is designed to help it stabilize quickly. The outside bezel of the disc has bearing or vertical angle measurements printed on it, and there is a magnifying lens that is used to align the instrument with the target and take readings. The sighting lens screws into the aluminum housing and has an o-ring to keep dirt and water out. Turning the lens clockwise or counterclockwise adjusts the focus or diopter so it can be read without corrective lenses. Older versions of the Suntu instruments and the Brunton Survey Master have an optic that cannot be removed or serviced. The eyepiece in these older instruments is not waterproof, so water or condensation can get behind the lens and make it difficult to read. Some cavers have used silicone or epoxy to seal both the capsules and eyepiece to prevent this issue. The removable eyepiece in the latest Suntu KB-14, PM-5, and Tandem, as well as the Brunton Omni instruments, makes it easier to clean the inside of the lens if needed. Suntu sells several versions of the compass with different measurement units including azimuth degrees, quadrant degrees, grads, or mills. Additionally, there are versions of the compass with and without the ability to adjust declination. For cave survey, I recommend the KB14 360RG version, which uses azimuth degrees from 0 to 359, and there's no declination adjustment. The declination adjustment in Suntu instruments can get damaged or obscured with dirt, and incorrectly adjusting declination on instruments can be a source of systematic error. It's better to just take all measurements with magnetic north as a reference, and adjust for declination later during the data entry and compiling steps. Besides, the version without declination adjustment is about $30 cheaper. There are also several versions of the Suntu inclinometer with measurement units in degrees, gradient, topographic scales, secant scales, and height in meters for arborist use. For cave survey, I recommend the PM5 360PC model, which has a degree scale on the left side of the dial that goes from minus 90 to plus 90 and percent slope on the right side. The Suntu compass and inclinometer are factory calibrated and the compass has a claimed accuracy of one-third of a degree, whereas the Clino has a claimed accuracy of a quarter of a degree. The plastic capsules are held in place and accuracy is adjusted with a screw that is set at the factory and then covered by epoxy. Replacement of the capsules or manual adjustment for calibration purposes is not available to the user. Even though accuracy is factory set, and for most instruments it's within the stated range, it's still a good idea to check on a compass course, because I have found that in rare situations, instruments may have a bias of up to 2 degrees. Even though calibration can't be user adjusted, readings can be corrected during data entry if you've measured the bias on a compass course of known orientation. The next best option to a compass course is to compare readings between multiple instruments. A bias in one of these instruments is uncommon, so to coincidentally end up with more than one instrument that is out of calibration by the same amount is very unlikely. 
The KB-14 Compass and PM-5 Inclinometer have a sealed capsule that cannot be used or serviced or repaired. The latest capsules are thinner and more fragile than on older instruments, and therefore they are more easily damaged. The damping fluid is believed to be kerosene, but repairs generally aren't successful. The only place to get these capsules replaced is through forestry suppliers, who charge roughly $70 to $80 per capsule, which is about half the cost of a new unit. It's a good idea to protect and pad the instruments for transport through a cave. They come with a padded sleeve, but it's a good idea to put them in a hard shell case such as a pelican case, or at least wrap them in a spare shirt or sweater. The most vulnerable part of the instrument is the face of the capsule. This can be protected by gluing a small piece of polycarbonate over the face. Swago Gear makes sight shields for the Suntu Compass, Clino, and Tandem. Instrument capsules sometimes develop a small bubble that is due to expansion and contraction of the capsule housing. This is not uncommon at high elevation, and if it's big enough, it can interfere with readings. Returning to low elevation may get rid of the bubble. I've also found that setting the instrument out in direct sunlight heats it up gently and usually causes the bubble to disappear within 10 to 15 minutes. You can also gently heat an instrument with a heat gun, but be very conservative and methodical if you attempt this approach. A crack in the capsule results in a much larger bubble that will not go away due to the loss of damping fluid. Older versions of the Suntu compasses had region designations. The Earth's magnetic field has a vertical dip to it, and the regional versions of the compass have different counterweights that are designed to keep the compass disc level. All of the versions sold today are considered global models and presumably have enough weight in the disc to ensure the magnetic field dip isn't a problem. To read the compass, hold it horizontal and adjust the diopter until the numbers on the dial are in focus. Be careful to avoid interference from anything ferromagnetic. This might include headlamps with a magnetic switch or battery on the front of the helmet, a camera or spare batteries in a front pocket, some watches, and even possibly steel frame glasses. There is an oval slot in the diopter that should be oriented vertically. Make sure the instrument is level from side to side by ensuring the vertical sighting line is parallel to the vertical index marks on the compass dial. Either position the instrument directly above or below the survey station you're shooting from, or position yourself behind the station so that the instrument and two stations are directly aligned. Line up the vertical sighting line with the station you're shooting to and hold the instrument steady. It helps to have your body in a stable position and hold the instrument with both hands. Read the dial to the nearest 0.5 degrees, which is the precision of the instrument. While it may be possible to take readings between the half degree index marks under ideal conditions, a precision of less than 0.5 degrees exceeds the accuracy of the device and generally isn't repeatable in most cave conditions. Readings to the nearest 0.5 degrees is precise enough to give good loop closures of less than 1%. The Brunton Sightmaster and Suntu KB20 compasses only have index marks for each whole degree, but a half degree reading can be interpolated between these marks. There is some debate about whether to use one eye or two while taking a reading. The Suntu instruction manual advises having both eyes open and letting your brain merge the image from the instrument and the image of the target. However, there are some potential accuracy issues that may be introduced using this method for cave survey. There is some disagreement about the true cause of these errors, but issues such as eye dominance, heterophoria, rivalry error, and or parallax error can cause you to get different readings depending on whether you're using one eye or two. You can test this for yourself by attempting to read with one eye and then two to see if the reading you get changes, but using one eye eliminates the possibility of any of these error types and is strongly recommended for cave surveys. To read with one eye, you'll want to shift focus between the instrument and the target until the brain is able to align the images, and then with the instrument stable, you can take the reading. The dial on the Suntu compass has tick marks every half degree, whereas the dial on the Suntu clinometer in Brunton has tick marks every degree. For any of these instruments, there are larger tick marks every 5 degrees and a label every 10 degrees. On the compass, the larger set of numbers is the standard front sight azimuth from the current station to the target station. The smaller numbers represent the corrected or backside azimuth, looking from the target station back towards the current station. In most cases, you would read the larger number. The field of view is a somewhat narrow range of just under 20 degrees. Two sets of numbers are usually visible, but when the orientation puts you close to one of the 10 degree marks, it may be difficult to see a second number. One of the most common types of survey errors is to count degrees in the wrong direction away from the label. If you can see two labels, then look at them both to ensure that you're counting in the correct direction up or down. 
If you can only see one set of numbers, then rotate the instrument off target a little until two sets of numbers are visible, and then go back to the target to take the reading. To read a Brunton Clinomaster or Suntu PM5 inclinometer, hold the instrument in a vertical orientation with the capsule's window facing to the left. Position yourself directly to the side of the current survey station at the same elevation, or behind the station so that the two stations you're shooting from and to are aligned. The oval slot in the diopter should be oriented horizontally. Tilt the instrument up or down until the index mark in the sighting window is aligned with the target station. Hold the instrument steady with both hands and take a reading to the nearest 0.5 degrees. The inclinometer has two sets of numbers. Degrees is on the left-hand side of the dial when you're taking a reading and goes from minus 90 to plus 90 degrees. The scale on the right is for percent slope and is not used for cave survey. A common blunder is to read the wrong scale. They are very similar at low angles, so it's an easy mistake to make. Just train yourself to only read the left side. Also verify whether the inclination is positive or negative. Reading the wrong sign is another common source of blunders, especially at angles below 5 degrees, where the error may be less apparent. Some of the most difficult survey shots to take are compass readings where the vertical angle is steep. The steeper the angle, the more difficult it can be to take readings, because the compass needs to be held level, so alignment of the sight and the target is a challenge. Shots that are steeper than about 35 degrees are especially challenging. If you attempt to tilt the compass more than about 7 to 8 degrees away from horizontal, then the disc will touch the walls of the capsule and interfere with its free rotation. Some people have installed glass or clear plastic rods or half rods under the front of the compass, which can reflect a light shine from the target. It's also possible, if using a fiberglass survey tape, to allow the survey tape to hang down between the stations and act as a target line. Most surveyors simply try to project a vertical line in their mind, above or below the site, and try their best to align this with the target. The point person can prevent many of these issues by stair-stepping stations with a combination of pure vertical shots and short lower angle shots. With the development of the Disto X2 digital survey instrument, sighting instruments made by Suntu and Brunton have become slightly less popular, but they are still in widespread use. They are rugged, waterproof, simple to calibrate, and don't rely on batteries. If you're an active project caver and want to be an asset to a wide variety of exploration and survey projects, then it's a good idea to get familiar with the equipment and techniques for surveying using sighting compasses and inclinometers. The Disto X2 is now out of production with no plans for a replacement, so there may be a return to analog instruments over the next several years.